Hi, in this Unity tutorial, we will be learning how to create an RTS game building placement system. It allows us to select a building, move it around the map, rotate it, and place it in a valid position. Now that we have seen the demonstration, let's take a look at our first script. At the top, we first have an enum called Construction State. It tracks what mode the construction is currently in, either inactive, moving, or rotating. Next, we have a number of public variables grouped by category. There's a camera reference, a set of input action objects for tracking mouse position and button clicks, settings for layer masks and colors, which are used to check placement validity and provide visual feedback to the player. And finally, a few private state variables to keep track of the current building object and its original state. We have the standard onEnable and onDisable functions, which just enable and disable the input actions respectively. Next, we have the enter construction mode method. It is called when the player wants to start placing a building. It clears any existing buildings being placed, sets the state to moving, instantiates a clone of the prefab at a mouse's position on the terrain using the mouse to floor point method, and saves the original color of the building's material. In the Unity's update method, we check if the state is not inactive. If it's not inactive, we call the process construction mode method which handles everything related to moving, rotating, or confirming the placement of the building. Inside process construction mode, we first check if the user wants to leave it. If the cancel action was triggered, it cancels the construction process, clearing the temporary prefab, and exiting construction mode. It then updates the construction state based on whether the right mouse button is pressed. In the case the right mouse button was just pressed this frame, we first save the current mount position and the rotation of the building as the initial state as we will need this data later on. Next, if the right mouse button is being actively held down each frame, we change the state to rotating, otherwise we keep it in the moving state. Back in our process construction mode method, we check the construction state. If it is in moving mode, we call the move building method, which positions the building object where the mouse points on the terrain using the mouse floor point method. This method casts a ray from the mouse position into the scene and returns the point where it hits the terrain. If no hit is found, it returns a zero vector as fallback. This is how the building knows where to move on the terrain when following the mouse. If rotating, it calls the rotate building method, which calculates the horizontal delta of the mouse pointer position and rotates the building around the y-axis accordingly. Next, we use the can construct at position method to check if the current building would overlap with any existing buildings. It uses physics.overlapbox non alloc to detect nearby colliders with the same building layer. There will always be one collision detected, which is the building itself being placed, so the method returns true if exactly one collision occurred. If the placement isn't valid, the building's color is changed to the invalid color, and no further actions are taken that frame. If it is valid, the color switches to the valid color. And lastly, in this method, if the player clicks the left mouse button, we call the construct building method which resets the building's color and exits construction mode, leaving the building in place and resetting the construction mode state to be inactive. The building.cs script is attached to each building prefab. It is mostly a helper class designed to keep the code in our previous script cleaner. At the top, we reference the object's mesh render as well as the box collider. We then have methods for getting and setting the color of the building. Next, we have the center point method, which returns the object center point in world coordinates, which is not the same as the pivot point. A quick way to do this is to transform the box collider center point from the object's local space to the world space using the transform.transform point method. Lastly, there is the collider world size method, which returns the object's collider size in world scale. Now that we have taken a look at our script, let's go to Unity and see how we can set the whole scene up. Let's take a look at our prefabs first. We have two prefabs, the church and the residential building prefab, and on both of them we have a box collider and a mesh render, as well as a rigid body. We have attached the building.cs script to it, and we have referenced the mesh render and the box collider for each of these prefabs to be its own. We have also set the layer to be the building, and under rigid body, we have set it to be kinematic, because we do not want any physics on it. Next, we have a building constructor object, which has the building constructor script attached to it. And over here we can see we have the camera referenced, which is the main scene camera. We have set up our input, so for the pointer position, we have the position of our mouse pointer. We have the left click, the right click button, and I have made the cancel input be the escape key. I have also set the terrain layer to be the terrain layer. 
I have set the building layer to be, well, the building layer. I have chosen two colors, one green, one red for valid and valid. And we have the rotation speed set to 0.5. Our scene floor is the floor object, which has set its layer to terrain. And it also has a box collider so we can cast rays on it and it will actually interact with it. Lastly, our UI consists of two buttons, one for placing a church, one for placing a residential building. And each one of these buttons references the building constructor script and it calls the building constructor .enter construction mode method with its appropriate prefab. So the residential building references the residential building prefab and the church references the church prefab. Thank you all for watching. I hope you learned something today. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Make sure you check out the project files in the description and I hope you have a nice day. Bye bye.